Welcome back to Men Behind the Mitts, guys. Episode 86 going live for you today. I'm Big J, your host, and this uh, over here, this this strapping young lad. This is Silk. Silk. Hey. Tell him hey. what's up. This is going to – I'm excited for this one. We got BLPA coming on. The founder. Yeah, Nick. going to be deadly. A lot going on in the NHL, Winter Olympics. I'm ready to get it going, buddy. Yeah, this is – I'm looking forward to this one. And, uh, man, let's just jump right in. We're talking about all the things we're talking about. We just got to save stuff for next time. Yeah, so many things to talk about. We can dissect hockey into so many things. So the fun fact, we could talk for hours about hockey numbers. <laughs> <laughs> no, just numbers. That's what we were ta- just what talking about good. numbers. What doesn't look good? Who what doesn't look good? And why? Who inspires you? Why? Yeah. But and yes, just, welcome just, back. Yeah, welcome what? back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just do it because I was about to dive deep into it. I was going to be like, it's a 99, no, no. 87. We got, we'll save it for another time. We'll save it for episode 87. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> welcome back episode 86 from men behind the mitts going to get you guys going here uh back with the boys good to be back you doing yeah. well yeah yeah thanks to everyone that's made it back uh, for another episode if you're on yeah, audio definitely. we appreciate it if you're watching us hey yeah definitely hey, hey. got some What's finger up, action for you audio folks you're yeah missing Ooh. Out. are you are you finger banging them it's like closed caption here you go, <laughs> audio folks. he slowly alternates hands while making gun signs your bang pow, pow, pow. oh so stupid oh this yeah, is gonna man. be a fucking sick episode huh yeah i'm really excited we definitely have, we have an inter- we have a guest we have a guest uh so excited we haven't had a guest in a while but it's gonna be back in the saddle can't wait to get into that um so we're just gonna we're gonna dive right in um everything's good personal life let's just fast forward everything good um, i know it sucks we're not gonna get to have therapy today but it's okay yeah, I'm good. I'm good. You know, uh, big things coming for Men Behind the Mitts and Silky Mitts all yeah, together. I for sure. And that's just going to have positive vibes on so many different people that yeah, I'm just excited to get going here. Uh, just Definitely. keep on grinding. I'm glad, ba- glad to be back from the break because, like, the podcast, like, if anybody thinks it's easy, too, like, we just show up and post our shit. There's some there's some work behind the back scene. So, like, oh, it's, it's, it's like, yeah. it, it's, it's, it can be a time. It does get to the point where it's repetitive. But yeah. it feels good to be back. Like we had that break. We got to, you know, we went hard. We didn't miss a single week yeah. for, what was it? We went over a year, right? Yeah. For 80, 82, 82 weeks, I believe. Yeah. Or something. And I think we yeah. have to applaud ourselves on that, bro. We, we, oh, really, for sure. a lot of podcasts start out once a month, you know? Yeah. And, and I don't know if you got the, when it comes to time, because we're banging out hours. Oh, for sure. And the, in the, we were over 3,500 downloads, yeah. you know, like that's a big deal. We're, we're, we're big building steam. Us. Let's go. Yeah. For sure, a big deal for us. And, you know, thank you guys. So the, the downloads, the, the streams, the views, all of it, it all adds up. Trust me. And, and, and it's noticed and it's, you know, it makes our reach easier and we get bigger. And then that's why we get to do more stuff and our, you know, our outreach is get bigger. We get to meet more people, et cetera. So, yeah, it definitely helps out in all the angles. But it's exciting, man. Like you said, the break was nice. It was good to, good to take a little break. Um, but, you know, getting ramped up you know, coming in hockey season strong right now, got some personal stuff coming up, you know, back now that hockey's back in full swing, you know, kind of, we're getting past COVID here. So yeah, man, a lot of stuff is, is coming together and excited for the summer. Definitely excited for the summer season. Oh, this yes. year. Spring too. But, Spring's coming. I've already started planning my outdoor setup. I'm going to start building. So I got some wheels to train all summer. I don't want to, yeah. you know, for sure. It's the best dude. I, it, outdoor. That's why I can't wait for it to get warmer. Like we had that one taste. That's why I got like, allergies already and my throat's already itchy we had one day of 60 we're back to freezing it sucks yeah but it's uh, been constant up here up in uh, oh i can't I'm, dude i'm so over it bro I flurry can't it, my- if flurry's here like it rains in seattle like it's night like flurry's like okay you it's know every day like, every, it's so- like 20 minutes off three hours later it's on you know 20 dude, i can't deal with that bro i cannot deal with the it's cold like, i've been working outside like it's oh so yeah well, fucking that bad. aspect no sir i applaud you on it, that 
Like climbing on a roof. It's, I look at last time I got in my van, it was 14 degrees. I'm like, I want to die today. Like, Not even just on- climbing on the roof. Uh, yeah, you get up there and it's much colder in the wind, but just, you have to work oh. up there. Like, you know, oh, yeah, me, the hands? I, I did contract and going up on a roof. Yeah, it sucks ass for a little bit, but it's once you're up there having to work, Dude, yeah. touching cold metal. Because sometimes, you know, depending on what you're cranking on, it's easier to just take the glove off. Yeah, you have to. You know? I, I can't. I don't, I have to, I, I don't know how some of those guys do it. I, I get irritated yeah. wearing a jacket working. Bro, me too. I, I, oh, I get I, fired up. Yeah, I, I can't do it. I can't do it with Good. a jacket. Hoodies, maybe, yeah. but not. I wear a hoodie. Yeah. But like I have to wear two of them. Like I wore bibs, and I wore a hoodie under my bibs, and a hoodie, a hoodie over my bibs, and my hoodie. Like, because jackets, I don't like them big. Like, all because all we have is like big, big car hearts, and like they're too much for me. Yeah, you know, I can't. I, I don't have the range of motion, but my bibs are. That's exactly I what I was relating bibs, to. I have the snap on jackets. Same fucking shit. Um, yeah, and the, I I knew guys that would wear them working, even sometimes over coveralls and shit. And I'm just like, nah, bro. Like, Woof. Pants and a shirt, like I don't even. And it's the worst. Please, if I don't have to, depending on what It's I'm the doing. worst because if you're moving, then you get all hot, and you're hot and fucking cold, and you take mm-hmm. a layer off, and then it gets even colder because you're sweaty. Yeah. That's the worst, right? I was just about—I was just thinking that. Yeah, you have so many layers on your busting ass working, Sucks. and then you take you a layer off, a- and you're freezing because your your back's soaked from sweating. Bro, the life, Anyways. the life. <laughs> but uh, you've been—have you been—you've been, you've been in the—you've been in the gym. You've been getting back in there at all, working out. My rotator cuff is still bothering me. Oh, that's so right. I've been that's hitting right. the dumbbells at least, and okay. I've been just slowly just yeah doing shit. I, yeah, I. That's a man. That's a real life question. <laughs> and I hate and I hate myself for the fact that I had to like pause and like do I lie? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't though. I couldn't I'm, do it to you. I had to be honest. I haven't. I'm honestly. like I'm like every other pretty much because of class right now. Like I'm no longer like I'm not pushing on class days. You know, it just kind of is what it is. Yeah. But I'm like every other except for the weekend. I always take advantage of the weekend. You know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, get a good, good lift in. You know, that's always nice. The worst but, uh, part is in, being in season too. Like the rotator cuff, all right, that kills me doing any upper body really, you know? And right. Like, well, I can't go do nothing crazy with legs because I'm skating two to three times a week and I don't want to be dead on the ice. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather. Yeah, no, I feel you. So it's just like, well, I, that's, the, that's the excuse I build on my head right now. Yeah. In so season training is been... tough. You would know. I mean, you got roller and ice now. And then imagine yeah, like I basically. And shit. Fuck. Work. Yeah. So I target leg day for Fridays mm-hmm. because usually like Sunday because we skate Sunday morning and Sunday night. So, like, I use Sunday morning to get loose, and then I just stretch, like, all day Sunday and Sunday night, man. I fucking – the boys are ready to go. Yeah, I usually hop on the spin bike for, like, clutch. 15, 20, get a little warmed up. The warm-up is so key. Like, I've noticed, man, just, like, since 75 hard and, like, my age, man, the warm-up is so key. The warm-up and the stretch, man, yeah. that's half the fucking battle, yeah. bro. Like, really, that is half the battle. Yep. Because I get going that's the crazy. Year. It's wild. Third period comes. I still, yeah. I feel like I still got legs. But First on period, where, I feel like sleepy. I don't stretch and not warmed up. Maybe I wasn't even active that all day. Like it wasn't a gym day. Like are a lot different than the days I'm at the gym that day and did some stuff, for, you know, throughout the day to stay moving and yeah, get the blood flowing. I, but dude, you're the same way. I go, I go third period and the game's over. I'm like, damn, game's over. I'm like, well, yeah, let's go. Like you almost feel bad. You're like, Shit, when... Did I not leave it all out there? I could go yeah, again all the time, I'll bro. I'm like, I'm like I... the late game. <laughs> yeah, I said all the time. Like, was I lazy again? I mean, really, it's hard when you're. When you're yeah. putting up ten like, teams like near Mercy and teams, like it's hard. Yeah. But like just leave it all it's out like in the first th- period, just tire yourself. Like. Pretty much. It's like, oh, let me just try hard on these this first one and then just work on. Well, that's what's dope is I do get to work on things. So you know what I mean? Like I, I consider I'm that only games, going back in you know? into the zone. <laughs> the yeah, next, like six passes, I'm coming all back in out of the corner. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, yeah, just yeah. shit like that. that. It's like mini but, um, Fuck yeah, dude. Uh before we get to our interview, let's touch on some uh, some NHL stuff going on right now. Uh, we got some we got some big stuff, big stuff. I think number one on the list has got to be Jack Eichel's back on the ice Wednesday night. Yeah, it's Tuesday. Anybody first time listeners, we record on Tuesday. It's drop on Thursday. Tuesday. So we're giving you an update after it happened. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, yeah, Jack but- Eichel will hit the ice. Uh, by the time this releases, he could potentially have some points on the fucking board for the season. How clutch! It's inc- I'm excited. I'm excited for him. I'm excited for the Vegas organization, honestly. But they're up- Vegas is doing some neat, some you know some stuff to- right now too. We're, we're about to touch on that in one second. But Tough. I'm excited to see Eichel on the ice with a team who is receptive. The attitude, all of it. It's there's, it's going to be a totally different Eichel, bro. Like besides the skill, I bet you he's calm. Even his first night back, it's going to be different. 
It's so funny to hear these Buffalo fans up here, like the way they talk about Eichel. And then like, just like I heard today, I heard someone comment like, hey, Eichel's supposedly back this week, uh, first game. And then the guy responded that quick. And he's like, well, they let him do the surgery. And it's just like, yeah, you morons. That's how simple it is. What? How do they not know? Not that they're no, but like, oh, that's all it really was. Like everyone foreshadowed it with being more than that. He didn't want to play here. There was so much gossip around the seven. Nah, bro. It was, that was the biggest, that was the biggest locker room cancer, all this shit. I know, bro. It was just trash. Literally came down to doing the surgery. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm hoping big things for him. I'm a big Eichel guy. A American born. Yeah. You know, always got to pull for those a little bit. Um, but yeah, Eichel's just a fascinating player to watch too. When he goes, he's got his own unique stride, everything, bro. Yeah. He just, he just is his own. He's not a copy, you know, he's not a, like a hard cut copy of like, you know, this is your, yep. this is what you should be as a hockey player. Like, so uh, I love, I love his, uh, his uh, unique styling on the way he plays the game. So he's fun to watch too. He's great for the game, especially growth. Uh, put him in Vegas yeah. showtime. Yep, I agree. Speaking of Vegas, too, trying to do some uh, some reaching out here to Mark Andre Fleury while he's meanwhile you know yeah, balls deep in a Chicago already. losing season, and Vegas is reaching for him back. What what what, what we we talked about this earlier via text, but what are we doing? Is is this even a consideration for Fleury? I mean, Vegas. It, de- it depends Vegas on how Fleury down? looks at this because he was upset when he left. You know, a the way he went, and you know he was finding a home in Vegas. But also, B, like, look at the way things have gone for Chicago. It's not like, oh, Chicago got a good goalie. They got some young guys came in. Seth Jones made a huge pickup on the D. Tate, Captain Sirius is back. Like, they're going to make – they could. they're a good squad again. Like, nah, y'all are a bus. Y'all right. are a big bus. And so, if, you know, you have that doubt first season, you're getting murdered. Your old squad's knocking on the door like, yo, we need you back. Let's go make another run. <sighs> like, that's tough, especially – He's won one before, so maybe he's a little classier. He's like, no, you know, maybe it, it depends. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's all on where he yeah. is, and he's a hockey guy. He just loves the game. So, but winning comes with that. You know, these guys love the game, but they love winning more. Yeah, it's a big so, deal. Uh, Chicago could – I don't know. I think that would – what does that look like on Flurry? Is he just a whore now? Is he just bouncing around, goes to Chicago for a year, goes back to Vegas? I mean, how many like, how many guys do that in general? Hop on one team. Yeah, you know, hop anything on anything to keep playing, right? But it's not like – I don't know. I don't know. I th- well, I think, the, honestly, Flurry has many options. Um, unfortunately, the Capitals aren't one of them, I guess, due to the history, which kind of suck because I, having someone like that would be solid, bro. I'd take Flurry any day. When I first read that top, that that headline, that caption, uh, it's no major news media dropping this. This is all in IG. I've seen it. But when I read that caption, the first thing that came to my mind is, do you remember them, him and Ovi going back and forth? I sent oh, yeah. line during warmups and he like chased him down and smacked him and stuff. Like, yeah, I was yeah, like, they were timing their skates. And they yeah, like, I was wow. like, I was like, that's that's the first thing I was like, yeah, no shit. And we took that, yeah, took that big LA <laughs> Vegas boy, we gave it to you personally. So, yeah, yeah I, I could see how that, but at the same time, I feel like he's also the guy like throw him right in there and him and Ovi are best friends in like the next day, you know, yeah, because the goal is to win a cup. That's my, that's my guy. Fuck. So, that's my guy now. I don't know. Like, I don't know. But you do hear players where they, they're like, like we could go to the next topic here. Giroux. Giroux yeah. is come one of the biggest names coming on this trade deadline this year. And he straight out came who he said he wanted to play for Colorado, yeah. Minnesota. You know, he wants to go win. He wants to go win a cup. Yeah. So, uh, got to respect that and that you know going back to flurry you know he could have a i don't want to go to washington i don't want to go to an eastern team that you know what i'm saying like i i played against these guys majority of my career i want to stay out west no i agree so that that's the next thing i want to talk about was claude Giroux directly asking hey man trade deadline i want to get out of here look you know abs minnesota if he goes if he goes to someone like the abs are you are you taking a guy like Giroux and forcing him and making space in that top six or are you throwing him third line? I mean, third line vet, you know, 12, you know, 12 seasons under the belt over here and you letting him work and maybe get a better mismatch on that third line than forcing him somewhere higher second and one. What, what do we do? What would you do with Giroux? I'm, I'm thinking third line, get him third line plug hard, get the mismatch, let him do his thing. No way. I think he's second line. I think he's second line guy. I don't think he, he gets that third line. No way. That's it. You'd have to, I but look even, at Colorado. You're coming in and you're busting up these lines. Like, you know what I mean? Like, even though. Yeah, but it's saying, not like. But Claude you're busting Giroux. up these lines with a, a stud. This guy's proven he's he's one of the best in the game. So, it's it's a, you have to look at it as an addition, not a negative, even though there is that chemistry there. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we felt the same way. Oh, shit, who's a good comparison? A lot of people were iffy about Mantha, the most recent, right? True. Ron, I okay. love B-Rod. Not me. I was so receptive. Oh, yeah. Re- that, 
not us. We're not allowed to talk about it. We're building. <laughs> but most people yeah. are like, oh, I love B Rod. You no, know, they get a personal connection to these players and it hurts. Right. We do too. But you know, they were like, oh, I don't know, Mantha, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. And he comes in and what is that? What happened? Like he he felt the boys that night at practice, like, yeah. oh, he's getting one and he does. Everyone was gelling, you know, that it just happened. Yeah. So it's not unrealistic for these guys to be open arms. Oh, we're getting Claude Giroux. We're gonna make a run for the cup. I don't care if I'm third or fourth line. Move me, right? Move me. You know, that type of mentality, it fits in anywhere. And that's why I this is so it. deadly. He, 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 anywhere, Minnesota, they're having a great year. Yeah, you his know, skill set is a great addition to any team. Yeah, it's all about cap space too. He brings a hefty, he brings a hefty paycheck. Yeah, but I mean, that's looking for an injury, looking for you know what I mean, or maybe you're getting away out of two, three other contracts. And this is I mean, a, who knows? Yeah, yeah, and you know, got to also remember this isn't a free agent sign. So the, whoever they're right. trading for, you know, this could be big name both ways depending on yeah. how a team wants to look <clears> at it. Uh, we just saw Tyler Toffoli getting moved. Uh, yeah, former King, then Montreal Canadian, now heading to Calgary. That's big. I'm a big Tyler Toffoli guy. I think he's a great player. Yeah. I love the way he plays. Um, so I think he'll do big things in Calgary. That's a big sign for me. We talked about Calgary last week and them trying to make a run with that. They're making a push for sure. Yeah. yeah, and they've looked good lately. They've looked real good. So we'll see how that goes. Um, any who, any other big names we're seeing coming up on trade deadline that you think of? Not, not off the top of my head that I yeah. – other than those, I mean, those yeah, are my we talked, highlight. Yeah, we talked about a couple guys uh, last week too, like Klingberg, Holtby, stuff like that. Oh yeah, Klingberg, yeah, and Holt looking for a new home. Yeah, there's a couple guys like that, but I mean, other than that, I don't know. And unfortunately, it's too deep in there to be like, who needs who? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah we gotta yeah, hit up. Yeah. We gotta hit our. We gotta hit our stack guy Sean up for that. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> you just laughed and then stopped. I was like, okay, he's got it. <laughs> I thought you had it. No, nah, it's all good. But I do want to touch on uh, Oshi and the Caps before we get out of here and jump over to the, the interview. Oshi's out of the lineup again. Today's Tuesday. Uh, the, you know, they're playing the Predators tonight. And uh, Oshi's out of the lineup again. Injury. You know, I, I don't want to see it happen. But I, I have heard, I think I read it one place where Oshi could be on the trade block come deadline here. Yeah, I saw the headline, too. Uh, and it was over top of a picture of Oshi, but you know you have to make the note that that picture is relevant to today. He he touched the ice. He was back at practice yeah. and at Kettler today. Um, so I think that's maybe a bait click right there. I yeah, I don't sure. see us getting rid of Osh if we're trying to add offense because if you get Oshi back and Oshi starts playing like Oshi, that's mm-hmm. that's leadership role alone that you can't replace. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think – I think that's that's got to be clickbait. I mean, I could yeah. see it, but just not right now. End of the season for sure. It didn't work out this year. You took a lot of injuries. Maybe you're on the back end now. You know, we don't want to take that risk. Definitely on the back end. But going into the cup stacking. with the chemistry he has with the locker room and the leadership role he has with the youth, you know, being – he was assisted a lot for uh, the kids' fucking first goal this season. So, like, you know, he's uh, – What? Big Michael East at Lafrenière. here. Yeah, he's got. He scored his first one with. He assisted on Lafreniere's too. You don't remember that play? Oh, oh Lafreniere. La, La what did I say? Laf. Oh, Lafreniere. Oh, that guy's in New York. He's. In New I'm York. drinking tonight. That's the issue. <laughs> it's Modelo time. Uh, but yeah. So I don't. Is that I don't a know, Molson? Is that a Molson? La Bet Blue. Uh, oh. Mm. <laughs> well, that sounds rough. No, dude. So good. Speaking of, boy, I threw back a couple at the old Navy hockey game we yeah. went to. Yeah. Boy, oh, boy. We, <laughs> that was the most Teddy Bruce because I've had in a while. Your boy was lit. And then we went uh, We were, we were went out in Annapolis. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, you went out, you mean? like? Yeah, yeah. We went out, bro. Like, <laughs> it's, 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 like, <laughs> like, bro, I haven't been to a bar bar in a long time. Was it matched like up? Sh- no, no, COVID's not real, bro, anymore. It's over. <laughs> yeah, we're nuts to butts and fucking armadillos fucking down in fucking DTA, bro. Yeah, I was like, I had to be easy. The oldest person next to the bouncer, the bartenders had to be. These pe- these kids, I say kids because these motherfuckers looked fresh out of high school. They looked so fucking young, bro. It was insane. Like I looked over like Stevie was there with me. I was like, bro, these kids look fucking young. They look like children. I was like, what are you doing here? Go home. <laughs> like, save your lunch money. Shit wow. was wild, bro. You got yeah. to that point in your age or were you just at the wrong bar? 
It could be a mix of both. I mean, I had a good time. They were playing some no, old hits, they, bro. I don't, there is no age limit. On, it really is the bar because I've been to bars, had a good time when I went, but it's like all old put folks and I'm the youngest there. You know what I'm well, saying? Well, it's DTA, so you know yeah, everyone's, yeah, yeah. you know, cool Facts. and hip, and I'm fucking 33, fist bumping in the corner, drinking RBV. You so boys like, can't yeah, hang. Bro. I don't even know who you're dancing next to right yeah. now. <laughs> we had a good Legend. time, man. We had a good time. So back at the, before we jump, man, back in the Navy game, ended up, no, my buddy I go to school with ends up being friends with the lead engineer for the fucking facilities over there for the ice arena. We go over, man. And we, he takes us behind the scenes, get to see the chillers, all the, all this cool shit. You know, we get to hang out ringside with all the maintenance guys are basically hanging out where the Zambonis are, you know, right on the glass, watching the game, you know, no, no brewskis allowed in the building. We're just pounding brewskis on the glass, like having a good fucking time. Beat, D3 hockey, you know, not the, not the best, but fun to watch. You know, the, the students were hyping it up. It's nice to see, like, a crowd, you know, like all the little all the little the hockey bros and the puck bunnies over there. It was cool to see. But, yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a fun time, bro. Like I said, then when we hit, uh, we hit Annapolis for a little bit after. That's all she wrote. Let's go. Sounds like a hell of a night, dude. Start yeah, it was a good hockey. time. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, well, I was like, man, I was like, I haven't, I was like, I haven't been out like this in a minute, dude. It was cool. How are you the next day? Are you good? I was good. Had a little headache in the morning. I was good. Other than that, I was like, I woke up. Was there was a beer, point. All beer all night or we hit the shot? Nah, yeah. There was, so, yeah. <laughs> so, so pound and Teddy Brewskis. We're like, we're so they're like, should we get a 12 pack or a 30 pack? And I was like, I'm only going to have like two. And Steve just looks at me. I was like, make it eight. Like fucking. So we just get two 12ers. And we're just ramming them down at the, at the hockey game, just like cracking and rolling. You know how it happens, man. Just, they just yeah, go quick. So easy, especially with hockey involved. You're just yeah, and we're just and we're talking, we're, you yeah. know, and uh, so easy. And then we're like, then we're right to the bar, you know, RBV, you know, got to got to get the RBV in. You know, it was like ten thirty. Your boy was tired. Get the RBV in. Green tea, another green tea, another RBV. What time you know, did you get home? Late, bro. Like, I don't even know. So I was going to say I didn't black out, but there's like 10 minutes of my night when I got home. I don't remember. But <laughs> chick. <laughs> so I forgot. So you, here you go. Here we go. This is why I don't drink. I was like, bro, I'm so hungry. So hungry, Steve. So we're on the way home. We hit Wawa. I grab, you know, wrap for me, wrap for him. Reese, Reese cups. I haven't had Reese cups. Well, I'll grab Reese cups. Fucking drink Gatorades for the both of us. Hammer that in the car, right? <laughs> I swear to God, I was done eating everything. And I was like, man, I'm hungry, dude. We should stop and get something to eat. You're bl- <laughs> like, I totally forgot. We fucking ate, bro. And he was like, we just ate. I was like, oh, shit. We get, <laughs> we get home and Chick got a chick got, uh, fucking hot pot down the road. Fucking this slamming fucking Chinese place. Fucking wonton soup, bro. I crush a thing of wonton soup. And I'm like, and I did the thing. I sat down and I was like, oh no. And bro, I couldn't even like sit. I had to like sit. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I was oh, so full. Did you really? Oh, oh yeah. It was the worst. It's, it's hands down the most food I've eaten in a long time. And I felt so bad. I woke up, my stomach hurt more than my head hurt in the morning because I was like, oh, I ate so much. Like, it's, it's so bad, dude. So funny. That's why, man, drinking, I don't know what it is. I fuck food up. Fuck food up. Let her eat, dog. <laughs> I was like, no, no, no. The crazy oh, part man. is you do that nightly. Nightly. That's, that's why I got, that's why I was 300 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> it's down, bro. Fuck. <sighs> All right. Well, yeah. Uh, I think it's time. Um, We have a great guest for you guys tonight. Uh, uh Beer League, uh, Players Association. Um, yeah. The BLPA. We're getting Nick from the BLPA to join us. He's going to pretty much tell us all about the Beer League Association, you know, how they got started. And, you know, it's, it's an awesome thing they got going on there. They put on these awesome tournaments, man. You can sign teams up. They have, like, a draft night. So we're going to learn all about it coming up. Let's do it, bud. All right, guys, welcome back. We have Nick joining us from the BLPA now. Nick is the, the founder, the creator, and one of the business partners of the BPLA. Nick, thanks for joining us on the podcast, man. Hey, no problem, guys. Thank you guys very much for having me. I, I guess you can call me co-creator. I mean, I got my business partner, Randy. Uh, Randy's a great dude. Uh, he doesn't talk as much as me, so no one gets to see <laughs> him, but 
uh, great dude, and uh, he's kind of a legend. Like everyone, he was in Eagle River this past weekend playing, and everyone was sending photos in with him. So, uh, Randy, uh, R- Randy's a great dude. So, uh, make sure you mention him if you're talking about BLPA. Right, for sure, man. And uh, before we get started, make, can you plug everything for us, man? Plug the Instagram, plug the, oh, the website so yeah. everyone can find you. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so uh, you can check out uh, everything BLPA, tournaments, blogs, podcasts, everything. BLPA Big Show at uh, BLPA.com. We're on every social media channel at the BLPA, even Pinterest, believe it or not. Nice. Uh, so anywhere, I, I, we're not on any like the Chinese or Russian social media sites, but uh, eventually <laughs> I'll get bored one night and have a few beers. And I'll be like, ah, we need to be on those ones and I'll sign up yeah. for those too. Yeah. There's traffic over there, man. There's global, traffic. All the global. Bot, it's a global bot traffic, BLPA. still traffic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, hey, it, it all looks like traffic uh, when you come down to it. And, you know, there is a ton of chi- uh, a ton of hockey in Russia, obviously. It, there's yeah. also a, a ton of hockey starting to grow in China. So, uh, I mean, the NHL is looking at China, so why shouldn't the beer leagues look at China, right? Definitely, yeah, man. There's sure. got there's definitely all levels, and there's definitely dudes who enjoy some bevies and some pucks. So it, it always works out well. Man, it's, it's a good combination that you guys got going on over there, too. So, Nick, how did you – how did everything come to fruition? How did you guys uh, – how did you guys get the ball rolling? Well, I guess if we're going to get right down to it, uh, my wife. <laughs> uh, nice. you, I guess you always got to give credit to your better half. But uh, I, I, I grew up in Oklahoma. I live in Calgary now. But, uh, you know, I never played hockey. Uh, I never was interested in it outside of uh, on uh, Tuesday and Thursday nights in Oklahoma. They had uh, silver coin beer. So – We'd go watch people uh, throw knuckles and, uh, and drink beer uh, in college. And then I, I met my wife, and she's from Canada. And basically my first Christmas up in Canada to visit her family, they bought me hockey gear and said, you're going to be a hockey player. That's uh, awesome. Still wasn't man. interested, <laughs> but uh, yeah. That's so awesome. I, she got me on the ice, and I was with I, I, my first time skating was with a bunch of uh, seven-year-olds. And they, they, uh, they chirped me pretty hard up here in Canada. <laughs> and oh, so, <laughs> but, they're probably uh, just yeah, born so I, good, just come out good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it's funny. It's funny you say that. I, I mean, in Canada, like I'm from Oklahoma, and hockey isn't uh, the biggest sport in Oklahoma. It is growing, but all my Oklahoma friends, when I moved to Canada, said, oh, we can't come play with you now because everyone's so good in Canada. But because there's so much hockey here, there's way more beginners in Canada than there are in the States. So it, it always right. averages out. That makes sense. That makes we sense. have to Man, applaud the-, the wife. Like, I have to go back to the wife and the wife's family. First Christmas, you're, here's hockey gear. What? <laughs> I yeah. ask for hockey gear every year, and sometimes I don't get it. This guy, first Christmas, <laughs> have to applaud the wife and the family. Wow. Well, I, okay, you got to say this. Uh, they did get me into it, and now she's like, how come all you ever talk about and do is hockey? And I'm like, hey, <laughs> you created this monster. You yeah. Uh, you know? Yeah, that's- Took you from the States to up to Calgary, man. There was a lot to unpack in that, in that first part, man. That's awesome. So you guys, did you guys, was that at post-college you guys went up there or what, what how did everything go? Yeah. My wife's a dancer, uh, not that kind of dancer. Maybe, <laughs> maybe she did that. I don't know. But uh, she, uh, she, she was a dance student in Oklahoma city. We have a really good dance program. And then we traveled around and she danced in some shows. So we live in like Branson, Missouri for a while where they have a bunch of dance shows and then moved back home to Oklahoma to help my dad with the family business, uh, which is not hockey. And um, she got tired of tornadoes and said she wanted to move back to, uh, to home. And uh, for me, you know, I caught the hockey bug and back home I was, you know, I, I got tired of just playing only on Sundays because that's when our leagues were in Oklahoma. And so I started a, another league night uh, for us called the GHL, the Gladiator Hockey League. And then I started uh, traveling around to team tournaments so we could get more hockey. And then I just created my own tournament. And so when she said she wanted to move back uh, to Canada, I thought there'd be way more opportunity to, to do my hobby of uh, yeah. hockey stuff. And l- little did I know that it would turn into a career, but it did. And it, it's great. I, I mean, I'm still not great on the ice, but I, I definitely try really hard and I, I just love the game. Yeah. Have that's to, that. Yeah, well, have to yeah, obviously after everything, you just number one, having, having fun is like the key right now for me, man. Like, you know, at the age we're at beer league buttes, you know, we just, we love having fun. We're tryhards. Like, but also tryhard. Like, yeah. You said the yeah, two things. You said the two right <laughs> yeah. things. No matter the skill level, that, that should be the goal, you know, to have a good time, yeah. but to also try hard. We're hella, we're hella tryhards for sure. No, I, I laughed when you said GHL because we have, we have a GHL here, but we call it the garage hockey league. And it's oh, okay. me, it's, and it's me and my roommate. We play one-on-one and beat the shit out of each other. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out so, to Steve-O. We, uh, 
Yeah, me and Stevie, but yeah, we call that the GHL. Man, so so you were t- so that's all we have here is you know the Sunday night league for real. And you know, that's all we have here. Mm-hmm. So got tired of it, started your own league. Was it within the same rinks that you normally played at or well, we only have three sheets in the whole state of Oklahoma. So wow. yeah, it was the same. Like you know, basically I just said, Hey, I want to play more hockey, who's with me? And so basically we got uh twenty guys, and this is how easy it, it is to start a hockey league. So I'm not giving I'm away any trade secrets or anything, but <laughs> basically I got, I got 20 guys and I made, I made four teams of five um, and we drafted those players. And so they were all even uh, in theory. Uh, and then every week we just combined two of the teams of five to make 10 skaters. So obviously I had one, two, three, and four. So week one, team one and two would combine to play three and four. So you'd always have 10 people and then you just rotate every week. So it's, it's almost like you had, four teams in the league and it worked really well and people loved it. And so you were always getting to play with those same, you know, the same guys, you had your five team squad and you got a, each, each uh, squad got a point if they won. And at the end we just did the standings and people loved it. People had a blast. And actually I've been up in uh, Calgary since 2013 and that league is still, still carrying on, which makes me really proud of my Oklahomies. And, and so, uh, you know, it's just, it's really easy to, to, to create it if, if you got a little drive and gumption. And so uh, that's how that league started. And, and then when I moved up to, to Canada, I actually caught on with another company. And uh, I, at that point, I was kind of in charge of growing a, a league that was already uh, 300 teams in five cities, right? So, wow. wow. Man. Just leaving your footprint of hockey too like you know wherever you leave you leave the okay and you know you still got a league that that many years still going that you create that's just crazy the footprint you're leaving already in the game yeah well i mean that's a testament to to all the people that that want to get involved right I, I say everyone always uh you know congratulates me on on the blpa but the blpa wouldn't be the blpa without the people in the blpa i i just happened to get lucky enough to say hey this is what we're doing and all these people caught on with, with what we were doing. And it's, it's been, it's been a crazy ride for, for the last, I guess it's been what, two years, uh, a little over two years now tw- into 2019. So, uh, you know, everyone, it, yeah, like I'm, I'm a pretty vocal person. I'm always kind of the face of things, but uh, it, it always comes back to the, the people that are behind me and supporting me and building it. I, I, I couldn't do all this on my own. That's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. You got a lot of moving parts too. It seems like, cause you, you're all, you're all over the country, which is, which is awesome. So how did, so how do we get to that point? So then you get, you have your, you get, you get the BLPA up and running and then you start going, I mean, international essentially, but I mean, so how are you picking and how are you picking these cities and going from there? You know, when it, when it, when it kind of first started and I needed all these cities, obviously you go to where you have support at first. Okay. Uh, and, and just a huge shout out to Columbus, Ohio, by the way, I have a lot of friends in Columbus and they're probably the most represented group in, in the BLPA. They just, they, they love what we're doing. They support what we're doing. Our first event was there and it, we didn't even go play hockey. We literally just, I call it the non-hockey hockey tournament. We do everything you do <laughs> at a hockey tournament, but we didn't play hockey. We hung out at a bar. We went to NHL games. We went back to the bar, went back to another NHL game the next night. And the people there just, I mean, they, they buy into what we're, what, what we're doing and they, they want to be a part of it and, and they love it. And, and I love them. And so, uh, I mean, to get to, to where we're at now, I mean, then once you get those first few tournaments off the ground and the buzz is kind of kind of here, uh, it's almost like, you know, I like to feel I'm pretty connected with what beer leaguers like and want. And so I was just like, well, where would I want to go play hockey? And luckily, most of the places that I have said, where would I want to go play hockey? Other people want to go play hockey there, too. Right. And so they they fill up the tournaments and uh, people say, well, when are you going to stop? And I, I'm never going to stop if people keep coming to them. Yeah, man, that's we, we we the Instagram is is unreal and just checking out how you put everything on and the in the jerseys and everything, man. It looks like one of the tournaments look wholesome. They look wholesome. You know what I mean? Like it looks like a good time. Doesn't matter who you're with, people you're meeting, you know, other buttes there. It seems like everyone just is there to to have some fun and play some puck. Well, I think you, I mean, the, the whole mission of the BLPA is to connect the world with sport and then make the world a better place by playing those sports, and and that's what we try to do. And you know, you, you say you, you try hard. I get trying hard. I get, you know, wanting to win. I'm, I'm just as competitive as the next guy. I mean, I, I grew up, I went to college and played baseball and I love winning, but now it's, it's kind of, you can, you can have that mentality, but at the end of the day, you have to realize that we're not really winning anything other than a chance to play these sports as adults uh, yeah. with like-minded people. And if you keep that, you know, at the front of your, 
the front of your brain when you're going through through what we're trying to do and you keep that positivity and that love and that character and that respect uh, it, it it all it it lends itself to great things and uh, I mean it hadn't always been perfect by any means but it's definitely it's definitely been uh, eye opening to me to see the amount of people that are buying into to what we're trying to create. Now, do you have with with your turn? And yeah, I love the philosophy as well, man. It's it's because yeah. that that's pretty much how I've transformed the last I'd say the last like three or four years of my play. Like it, I've, I've always been a try hard, but now I try hard, but it's with different intention. It's it's so it's it's for me, you know what I mean? Like I'm not mm-hmm. I'm not pushing people off the puck. I'm not you know going I'm not going hard like that. But you know I just I'm enjoying the game, you know, trying to still grow my skill, you know, and, and ability. So it's it's nice to you know now that I have that older mentality, I've I've definitely matured. I used to be a hothead growing up in puck, you know, and <laughs> always the first one to drop them and everything. And but you know now I've just grown now I just enjoy playing so much. That's my main focus is playing, you know, it, it, it's always, it's, it's just in life. I mean, the same for me with, with the business and with the game is like, I'm, I'm not competing with anybody because I, I don't really have to, uh, I'm competing right. with myself. Like how do I make myself better? Not only in the BOPA, but you know, as a better husband, uh, mm-hmm. as a better dad, as a, as a better hockey player. And so like, that's the mentality that, that I want to carry. And, you know, there, there's people out there that do the same stuff as us. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you got to think, well, you know, let them do them. You do you. You can have the same, sure. same type of tournament, but you, you put in what you, what you want to put into to your events. And if people like it, then, then they're going to come to it. And if they don't, then you got to find, find out what does work, what, what, what is better for you. Man, that's great. You got the, the great, great mentality. And I, we're the same way, man. We, I, I love that. We just try to be better every day. And, and, you know, I always, my thing is 1% better. I just want to be 1% better, whether, whether it's 100%. at work with the pod and hockey, like you said, everything. Um, but I do want to, I do want to talk about your tournaments. How do they, so how do they run? I was checking them out on the website and unfortunately we, we wanted to enter one last year. I think it was pre like right when COVID first hit. I think. Yep. And we were unsure with getting guys together and everything like that, but sure. I know you're coming to DC in September. So we're, we're definitely looking forward to that where, you know, hopefully we can uh, get something going, but how, so how does it work? Do you guys, so you take team entries as well. And then you also have the draft nights, which seemed pretty wild to me. So what, how, how would, what would I expect to come into that? Yeah. So, well, first off, I mean, we do have the team tournament uh, style tournaments and, and those are great because who doesn't like spending a weekend with their boys, Right, um, and, and that's what we're doing. We're actually doing one of those in DC in, in May. Uh, okay, they're cool. The BLPA, they're called the BLPA Bash, and uh, we actually have something this year where we, at the end of the year, we have what we're calling the Beer League World Championship. Every team that that wins their division in the Bash will be invited to this Beer League World Championships, and that's basically the only way you can get in this tournament. So you're playing against winners of, of every other tournament. So Man, that's, I mean, that's awesome. just your tradition. It's just your traditional hockey tournament. Uh, but how we how we kind of uh, I guess for ourselves into the tournament is we try to take the social atmosphere that we're building with the draft experience, which we'll talk about in a second and, and interject that into the team style tournament. Cause when I was going to team tournaments, you just hung out with your team and that's all like it was, just, right. and I get it. I get mm-hmm. why that's who, that's who, you know, but for me, it's, if, if you can, if you can expand uh, who you interact with at a team tournament, if your team interacts with this team and that team and that team, you're, you can build a community of people that, not only that you enjoy playing with or that respect you on the ice because they know you off the ice, but you're also expanding people that in the future could, could help you uh, in life. Like I, I always, I always talk about how most people that get jobs when they're adults aren't, aren't because of their qualifications. It's because of who they know. And so if you can build a community that can protect and support you, uh, even if you live in DC and I live in Calgary, but let's say you're coming to Calgary, there's so many people that I know now that if I come through town, and I need help. I know that uh, they're a phone call away, or they'll even message me and say, "Hey, I know you're coming here. If you need anything, you need a couch to sleep on, you need yeah. something. I'm here for you, right?" And so you try to you try to build that. And at the end of the day, like we're talking hockey as a fun fun, you know, oh, it's a game we play. But to, to right. me, uh, hockey is, is a community that that can help you in, in life. And a lot of people don't ever need the help, but to know that if something ever happens you know, this guy that I met in the BLPA, he'll, he'll give me a hand if I need it. I, for me, that's, that's a, that's a really big deal for me. No, no, no. You, you hit the, you hit the nail right on the head when you're talking about hockey that we've preached, we preach this me and Jay all the time is the, the community that you have in hockey. is just, it's, it's, there's nothing like it from the, it, all the way down to, to youth groups up to, to the very leagues. You, you, you've, I, we've seen it, you know? 
Yeah, and that's and that's what I uh, like. I grew up playing every sport known to man except mm-hmm. hockey. Uh, like I played basketball, football, baseball. Baseball paid for my my college, uh, and at, like my first three weeks on the ice, I was like, this, this is so much different. I mean, the, the guys that were playing at the University of Oklahoma that were good hockey players, uh, you know, they're out there trying to help you. It's like when you when you're a hockey player, you're in this cool little club mm-hmm. that on, only you're in, and it 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 just it, it it's outstanding, really. I mean, it's it's really indescribable. Other than, I mean, you know, my friends are all hockey players now. And, and you know, and so for me, it's just like, well, h- how do you grow this community? How, how can I put this community into softball, into soccer? And there's a way. We're trying to. Uh, but right now, like, the hockey community that we have is so big and so strong, you just kind of got to, you know, branch out a little bit. And, uh, you know, selfishly, it, like me, I never got to play hockey. What if some of these softball players realize that they can? play hockey and so we can actually have the opportunity to, to grow the game in, in that fashion just by playing other sports yeah man you're so yeah i love it and and that's another thing too that's so uh, i guess personally fulfilling for me it's like one loving the game so much that i want to grow it so that like we've seen it with uh, our, our buddy on our team uncle rob older guy got into the game late and i got more fulfillment helping him out getting better and seeing him score his first goal and and seeing him progress now three seasons later you know he's a grinder he's in the corners you know he's he's doing his thing like it it, just to see like someone have that much growth and enjoyment in the game instead of they come to their first skate and they play with some pricks who are just dangling them and and, you know being assholes and now maybe i don't want to go back to that you know that it it kills the vibe and so yeah i i I, that's that's so true to the testament side note side note for uncle rob he's uh he's now refing so my man has gone from (laughs) Like Is you he? know, not playing. Yeah, man, he refs. He refs like U twelve and stuff. It's cool, bro. <laughs> I love that I talked, guy. Uh, yeah, I talked to him last game we played him. But yeah, so that, that's that's why that's one of my favorite examples. Is Uncle Robinson, man, dude, jumped in because his son played puck. You know, wanted to get playing, and man, you know, was on our team for a while, and he's, now he's on another team. But so crazy, I played against him. It's wild to think about that, man. Because he's like one of my favorite people. But yeah, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> that's you know, and that's for me. Like that, that, that's a perfect lead into our draft experience because you know that you know, helping other players and, and that, that that's what the draft experiences are all about. And they are wild. They are crazy. Uh, right. I mean, basically you don't, you don't know who's on your team. You sign up as an individual. We meet on Friday night and we make teams by beer chugging contest. And <laughs> then we play every, <laughs> every team plays five games uh, over the next two days. So it, it, it's, it's a, it's a battle. It's a journey uh, yeah. through the weekend with these guys that you, that you don't know, but you're about to be best friends because you're going to have to battle with them. I mean, I, I know people say, oh, five games. That doesn't sound very much, but that's a lot. Three games. Yeah. When yeah. you play three games <laughs> in nine hours, like that's a lot of freaking hockey for, you know, us yep. old folk now. Right. Yeah. You ain't lying. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> and so, I, you know, I think that, you know, that what I really like seeing at the draft and what really kind of drew me to, to, Hey, I need to start my own and, and keep these things going and building them is, is you, you got players that, that have played their whole life. And then you got players that me that started when they were in their adult life. Uh, mm-hmm. thinking that they're never going to get a chance to play with these players that have all this skill. And the draft allows them to do that in, in a, in a, in a spot where the, the players that are super skilled don't care that they're playing with a beginner because that's how right. every team is. Every team has a, I like to say ringer, but top level ringer. And every team has players that are beginners and a mix of in between. And in theory, the way the draft works, every draft round has players of similar skills. So you should all get the same skilled guys and then you just play. So what I, I like seeing what I see a lot is these ringers say, Hey, you've never scored a goal. Go to that net. And I'm going to try to put one on. Stand back door. Yeah. It happens all the time. It's it's, (laughs) it's insane. And it's crazy because like how many times I've seen players score their first goals and like both teams, like rush the ice. And you're just like, that's so dope. Okay. You know, it's, it's, (laughs) yeah, it is dope. And I I love it. And that's kind of what keeps me going with the drive. People like, Oh, you do so many of them. Like, do you get tired of them? And no, because like no way. when I get tired of them, I see something like this and I'm like, oh, I remember my first goal back in 20, you know, 19 or I'm sorry, 2015, 2017, whenever I scored it. And uh, it, it reminds me of that. And it's like, we're, we're giving that experience to a bunch of different people. And, and that's rad. Yeah. Oh, I've, yeah. Been, I've, I've been playing a lot of assist King this year, this beer league season. It's been fun, man. Just dishing them clean back door. It's been fun. The wave but, of, of reach you guys have with the authenticity of it all. It's just so far because now you got to think that guy is never going to forget that moment in his first goal. Mm -hmm. And what's he going to do? He's going to tell his boys that don't play. They're now going to be like, damn, you know, I've always thought about playing hockey. I love watching hockey. I should give it a try and go with them, you know, and you guys are making that happen for this guy, you know? Yeah. And you just, you you give people a a home 
and mm-hmm. and let them you know for me i you want to you know bump your chest and say oh i'm growing the game but i just go back to like it's all the people in our group like yeah th- there's a lot of pricks in this world <laughs> and luckily we haven't had too many of them in the blpa everybody really seems to care about each other and you know you know they'll go to they'll go to bat for you if if you have an issue and it's the same for me like all these people that i interact with that i've never met but i would go to fucking bat for these guys i i just would and right. you know so that's cool man you know when, when you have a community that'll do that it's easy to say hey bill i know you don't play hockey but hey come over here and try we'll, we'll get you going and then we get them going and then bill tells you know tom and john and john and then tell seth and you know craig or whatever right so it is a it is a cool organic way to to build the game just through being kind and nice and caring about people. Definitely, man. And then so with the with the draft experience, I I, I loved it. Like you got you post the jerseys all the time, man. I don't know whoever your designer is, if it's you, you know, incredible. Like the just the color schemes, the logos. Is that are those the jerseys that you use for like the draft teams? Is that what that's yeah, for? That, so, so yeah. So what our releases are are actual the actual jerseys for each tournament. Every tournament has a different theme. And so it's crazy to think like, oh, what's part of your job? Oh, I think about cool hockey jerseys. No, nah, that's the things, coolest shit. You know? <laughs> don't don't ever let anyone take that from you. I got, I got your back on that, Nick. Like, don't. <laughs> uh, but I got to I got to give credit. Uh, obviously, where credit is due. Like, I, I I can't do the manual design, but I have all these ideas in my head, and I'm lucky enough to work with people like uh, Tim at at Envious, uh, and also the guys over at Men's League Sweater, and they're able to you know, take what I have in my head or what my boys have in their head and, and put it into those jerseys. And it's, it's back and forth and that you'll, we'll send them, we'll say, ah, that's no good. Try this and this and this. And then they do it and then we make it. And, and luckily we haven't had, I, I can't think of one that where we've had a dud that I've just been like, oh, that's kind of a bummer. Like all of them turned out really well. Yeah. Maybe that's just me. Cause, cause they're my babies, but uh, I haven't. No, no, you haven't that. missed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we, we we had a couple ones where we did like uh, we had some beer beer uh, companies sponsor us and those weren't uh, to the on par with a couple people in the group. But at the end of the day, right. it's like if these guys are giving you free beer, yeah, you, you, do, you just make their their logos on jerseys, right? So, uh, but for the most, I mean, we got some exciting ones coming up, like the Boston one with the 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 playoff like Drop Kick Murphy albums, and we're calling it the Dex because Dex Kick Murphys. Yeah, and we have uh, a Omaha tournament. We're doing like a Mortal Kombat. We're calling it uh, Mortal Komaha. Those are some pretty <laughs> sweet ones. So oh. it is, it is, it is fun. And then I got, a, I got a, a couple in the hopper that I, I don't want to, I don't want to tease too much. But I, I we did just uh, do a Buffalo today. We we just, uh, we just signed on to do a one in Buffalo, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be wing places for sure. That's awesome, man. God, that's so cool. You're really nailing it, dude. And so, do those guys get to keep those jerseys and and everything? Yeah, they do. And that's, that's the cool thing about the draft is they, they keep the jerseys. We give them a, you know, a t-shirt and they play the five games and, and, you know, they get a medal if they win. So it's a, it's a really cool thing. And, and we're moving into doing pant shells as well Nice, definitely. Uh, for some Bro. of the tournaments. And so they get, I want to do one of those. I want to do the draft for sure. <laughs> that's, that's the one in September in DC for sure. Okay. Nice. Yeah. I'm definitely going to look at it. Just, just, be, I mean, we can probably get the boys together, but man, just for everything to be taken, that's the hardest fucking part. Is mm-hmm. get, I can't believe at this age still getting fucking money from everybody and getting like it's just getting a team <laughs> organized, dude. It's the worst. That's why I'm like, I'm just going to do the draft. Uh, we, we now that we know you, we you know we I, we can get right in there or whatever. You know, the draft night might be where it's at for me. So uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was gonna say it, it is it is definitely like that. That takes a big burden off. I mean, I, I was a team GM myself. And so I know it's just like daycare, right? You're keeping up with all the, all the kids in there and give me some money. Ah, my checkbook's in the car. I'm like, but it's 2021. No one uses checkbooks anymore. Just send me the damn money. Like PayPal me. Yeah. me. And uh, so I get that. And the draft does alleviate that. I mean, you know, that's the thing is people say like when first timers see it, they say, oh, that's a little bit expensive for, for a hockey tournament. And then, then they come and they see everything that goes into, I mean, you have the draft night where basically you get a couple free free drinks. And then we also give you the drinks for the chug rounds. Then you get the jersey, the 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 socks, sometimes the pant shells, you get the t-shirt, you get five games, and you don't have to organize a team. And people are like, I would pay way more than what you're charging. So keep going. Right. Yeah, yeah I'm definitely in for that. What were you gonna say? So no, he kind of touched, and I was just asking, like, you know, give everyone a, a a feel for the vibe of what they're gonna get with that experience off ice. You know, I've seen a, a lot of people post that you guys got something going in the parking lot with with dogs and beer and like the whole so tell people <laughs> what, what it's like off ice. 
yeah, so we that, that was kind of you know I worked for another company doing doing these and like I always want to put my own spin on things you know not trying to ever copy anyone to do my own thing and so whenever we whenever we started and we're like how can we be different how can we set ourselves apart and like it's it's a social atmosphere so how do you build a social atmosphere outside of the hockey well you tailgate that's what you do you yeah have a parking lot you drink <laughs> beers you you hang out and you know COVID everyone said oh it must have sucked for COVID and for me like. I, I kind of liked COVID to be honest with you. It kind of helped me a little bit because I, I couldn't come back into Canada. So I had to stay in the States and we had to kind of figure that out. And so what we did is we just bought an RV uh, as a company and we yes. traveled around for the first like four and a half or five months. So we basically, I just stayed at the rinks. We had an RV out front and, you know, we had TVs going, we had music going, we were able to, you know, bring our trailer and our merch. And now we have like a 20 foot uh, blow up uh, inflatable screen that we can put, you know, NHL games on, or we, uh, the last couple of times we've watched like Miracle, we've watched Slapshot, we've watched Youngblood, uh, just, you know, Bro. hanging out in the parking lot and drinking beers. We've got little fire pits going. It's, you just, you just try to sit the whole vibe. That's, that's what it is. Yeah. You are the culture, man. You're so, you're downplaying it. Not, not that you're downplaying it, but yeah, you're just so like, you're blowing BL- my mind. I'm like, this is what I want to, like, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to be a part of. BLP like, you know resort I mean? like, coming soon, folks. BLP. What did I <laughs> just, what did I the, just send you? We got to get a ring going first. I get, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're gonna work on that. But what did I just send you the other day, Silk? That I was looking at. We're literally looking at buying like a Winnebago, like yeah, a yeah. twenty, like a twenty-one, twenty-four footer for for the boys yeah. getting men behind the mitts on the road. Like I said, we we got to make our way into Canada. We've got yeah. so many stops to make, you see. know. And yeah, yeah, and uh, but that's what I want to do. Like that's what I want to do with this. Is just drive to rinks and you know why we're you know try to hit a tournament, hit a skate, hit a hit a pro Everywhere game. Go, you know, yeah. And, Unfortunately, COVID kind of threw a wrench in everything, but I, I want to, I'm going to want to get back on that horse for sure. But that's something that needs to happen. Well, I, my dream is to have a tournament and it's free. And the only thing you have to pay is you have to camp in the parking lot and you have to bring <laughs> RV, you have to camp uh, and I'm working on it. I mean, I, the, the thing is free. Like I got to find sponsors, obviously that, that, that'll get behind it. And I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm building it up. I'm building it up. And I think we're going to make it happen eventually. So I, usually once I set my mind to something, I'm pretty persistent on, on making, making sure and seeing it through. I was going to say, it seems like that. It seems like you, you definitely enjoy the challenge. You, you enjoy the grind and, and making something. You have that vision. I can tell everything you've said, you've literally done. Like, you know what I mean? You've, you've put it out there. And then, like you were talking about creating the culture, like you brought the culture. You were the whole vibe, bringing in the, bringing in the RV, the trailer, the blow-up TV. I mean, you nailed it. Like you, you, like you said, you were the vibe. You were the culture for that, for the BPLA or BLPA. And it's, it's perfect, man. It's so cool. Yeah, it it's sounds so, cool. so amazing because, like, what do we do at 20s? at nighttime you know saying if we're not playing like we're bar hopping or we're at the hotel parking lot chugging beer so why not be at the rink in the parking lot with like-minded individuals maybe like games on maybe you know young bloods yeah, on. saucing something that would, yeah you know that I means yeah. like just the whole 24 uh, 7 hockey vibe you know for the weekend you know that's something you can't yeah yeah you can't replace that's so awesome i love everything you guys are doing i i'm, well, I'm ready I, to I, join <laughs> basically what 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 we want to do is you know when when we were in college we just wanted to be adults right and now that we're adults we just want to be back in college yeah, yeah, so yeah. we're trying we're, try, we're trying to make a like a make you feel like you're back at a frat sorority party uh for the weekend yeah uh, and, and, and basically what we're saying is we want you to think that there's no consequences, but there are consequences. <laughs> <in the adult>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and usually the consequences are uh, hangovers uh, sick for a week. But what I've found, I call that the deck hangover. And basically what happens is you, you get home, you get home and you're miserable for Monday, Tuesday, because your legs hurt. You just played five games. Maybe your liver's still recovering. And Tuesday, you feel a little better. Wednesday, a little bit better. And then by Thursday, you're like, shit, when can I get to another draft experience? <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! So what you're saying is, I got I'm gonna definitely take off. I was gonna take off Monday for my legs, anyway, so Monday, Tuesday, give Tuesday <laughs> for the stomach, because I, I handle hangovers like a bitch now. So uh, I, I I've got so many stomach issues, like it's just nuts. Like I've been in and out of the doctor. Like just today, like I'm I'm about to turn 40, and I had to have, go have a stress test, and Ugh. like I get there, and like they're like, why are you here? And I'm like, what do you mean, why am I here? They're like, well, listen, you're like you have to go 11 minutes. You're at like nine minutes. Your heart isn't even to where we need it to be. Uh, <laughs> why are you even here? I'm like, I don't know. I got sent here. And so I did my 11 minutes and basically it's just like, I'm just getting old and they're making me do all these tests and it's because of my yeah. stomach. So now it's like, I, you know, I love drinking. I love having a good time, but now it's like, I have to pick and choose because it's like, okay, I know I'm going to be miserable. Right. 
you know, it, it's got to be worth it. If I'm going to do it now, it has to be, it has to be worth it. And so you, you try to pick those big events where you're like, okay, this is worth it. I'm going, I'm going to give her full send. Let's go. Oh, That's pretty much how I've categorized it. I'm like weddings, you know, once in like, I'm getting ready to graduate next month. So I'm like, we graduate that we're going to have a weekend, you know, like I'm only doing it for big things, man. I, I do sneak a, I do like a Michelo from time to time, but I can't do it anymore. I just can't do it. But I, I have, I fucking love Die, Dr. Pepper. I, I love to fucking throw down though. Damn, do I love to have a good time. <laughs> yeah. I, I, hey, I love it when I'm doing it. I just don't yeah, like it yeah. afterwards, right? <laughs> and and the, the problem is, is that you always remember the last thing. So like, if I just have to remember the hangover, then it makes me not want to do what I did to get the hangover. But then right. when I'm doing it, I remember what I just did. And I'm like, this is fucking awesome. We should keep doing it. <laughs> it's a, it's <laughs> yeah. a cycle. I mean, it's, yeah, I guess it's a that's vicious cycle. And being mature. I don't know. I don't know. Something. Something like that. Yeah, man. No, that the, the whole vibe is dope, man. I'm, I'm a real big fan of it. Hopefully, I'm, I can't wait. Hopefully, we get to take part in the one in September. I know. So, that's dope. You have the bash. So, the bash is where they do the teams. Everyone submits a team. Yep. And what do you, do you have basic levels for that as well, like A, B, C, D, or how do you run those? Yeah, so we have, we have three levels, uh, but within those levels, we have different divisions. So, we have, like, ringers, which are obviously the good players, the heroes, right. which are just your intermediates, and then your benders which are the, the, the beginner level players. And then you have uh, the beauties, which are the women's divisions. And then within, usually most people go into that heroes category. And what we do is we make all the teams rate themselves on our draft scale. And then we, we have an algorithm that we created and it spits out a, a ranking of that team based on their players. And then we, we split the divisions up uh, like that. And it's not oh, nice. an exact science for sure, but you know, it's right. something that works. And, you know, we always tell people like, Listen, the, the number one rule at all of our events is don't be a dick. And if you're going to rate yourself so you're not as high and we think it's malicious, we're just going to kick you out of, of the – Right. Uh, we'll, let you play your, we'll let you play the three games, but you're not going to play in a championship. And most people have bought into that. I mean, God, last year in D.C. we had 30 teams at our first tournament, and, and there was no one that, uh, that we feel maliciously uh, rated themselves. So it, it, it's time to work out. But then, God, the, just that, that Laurel uh, Gardens Ice House there – where yeah. we do it those guys are fun. those guys are rad they're just like do whatever uh, obviously there's cops around so don't be drinking and driving but take over this parking lot and boy we did for yeah. uh, for a whole weekend we were just Fuck, I mean, we missed yeah, out. You have, yeah, yeah you have 30 teams 30 plus teams and each team has you know 10 to 15 guys on it like that parking lot was packed. i know i know you couldn't park in the parking lot where we were partying that's for sure because uh, we had that many people there so Man, that's nuts, dude. 30 teams. That's yeah, I like I like how you do the like the subdivisions so you don't get sandbagging and stuff like that. I'm sure it still happens, but nonetheless, like you said, I like your idea of the maliciously, like you know, another testament to the community, though. You heard them, they had you know no real issues. That just shows how good yeah. no one's gonna, you know, there are the select few, the bad batch, but yeah, like we, we've had we've had one team, we've had one team that that snuck through, and uh in their defense, it was probably more on me because when I talked to them, they were all roller guys. And they, mm. they had said they had just kind of got on, on the skates. And so they, I think they were just a little insecure in how well they could actually skate. Yeah. Right. Um, and so I probably put them in a division, maybe two divisions lower than what I should have in Columbus. And they won it. And you know what? They, they came to the next tournament. We bumped them up uh, two divisions. They won that. And then we put, they came to wow. the third tournament. We, bu we bumped them up again. And now they're perfect, right? So uh, it wasn't malicious on their, on their, on their, on their, yeah, they're uh, figuring it out. Uh, yeah, on their yeah, part. Yeah. So yeah, we, we, you figure it out. And, and I think people, I think at the end of the day, I'm a beer leaguer and I want, I want these events to be something that I would be proud to play in, but I, I don't play in the team ones because I just, I have some hangups about if I, if my team would happen to win, it would kind of look right. a little shady. So I just, and, and it has, it has happened before. Like we were in Vegas. I didn't, I played the first game because the free agent team, the LPA free agent, uh, they were short players and we even got beat by this team, but then every team went something like one, one and one in the division and it came to lowest penalty minutes and the BLPA team um, got into the finals and I got accused of rigging it for my team. I was like, but I played wow. one game to fill in. I wasn't even on it. Right. So, yeah. I, you know, for me, it's just, you know, I, I have, I have those little hangups, but I try to make it all these events. I try to make it something that I would be proud or want to play in. And, right. and, and I think a lot of people just, just respect and enjoy the fact that there's a, there's a team out there that's actually actively trying to make, the tournament's better and even and fair because hockey's not cheap. And, you know, most, most of these tournaments you pay, you come and the people don't care because they got your money. And right. we want to be, we don't want, we don't want to be like that. And so we, we try not to be, it's not perfect. And we tell people, Hey, we're not perfect. We try really hard. Sometimes it, it doesn't happen the way we want it to, but we will always yeah. try to make it better. 
always try to make it better. Not only that, like you don't want to get rolled, you don't want to steamroll. So it's not fun, you know, mercy in a team all the time. It's eight oh in the second. It's not fun. Yeah, it's not fun. You know, so yeah, you're you're right. It's and and you know, and it's not fun for the people you're playing. uh, Yeah, definitely. That are getting it, and it's not fun for you as a team when you're. I would much rather lose every game two to one than win every game eight to zero. Yeah, and that's what I mean when I say we we have fun, but we try hard. Like we compete, but it's it's like we have fun when we're playing against you know, the same skill level as us. Yeah. When, you're, when you're taking advantage of guys because of their skill level, that's just, that's weak. That's, that's just weak. It's not well, fun. I, and I get liking winning. And I think that the, the thing that I, as I've traveled through beer league hockey and listened to all these players, the, the one excuse that I hate is, well, okay. Yeah, sure. He's way better than everyone on the team, but we just put him back on defense. So it's not a big deal. And I'm like, no, that's still a big deal because uh, a guy that's, you know, an A-level player playing defense on a D league that's not letting people score, that's still affecting the outcome of the game. Yeah. Like you yeah. can't just dramatically. You know, so I always yeah, dramatically. And so it's I, I, we always try to say, I'm like, if you want to play with your friends that are really good, play up to their level. Don't let them play down to yours. But people don't like that because right. why? Because then they have to play up and, and mm-hmm. have way more competition. So it's like, well then then we're at an impasse. So what do you do? You either have your buddy make his own team of players that are his level. Or just you know, don't don't play a guy. You know, it's it, it, it's such a hard thing, is it? Because you want everyone to be there, and you want people to play with your friends. I have a lot of friends that are really good that I'd love to play with, but I know that if they came and played down with me, it, it just wouldn't be fair. <laughs> right. It's, yeah, it's on. on it's unfortunate. That's like what I'm going through with our league, like right now, because we don't we don't have enough teams. We barely have enough teams for a league, but you know the what what we have now, it's just unbalanced. And um, unfortunately, I'm on the team that's doing the mercying, and like it's uh. it the first period's fun. And then it's like, then you have to pass, you know, six or seven times before we shoot. And then I know it's deflating, you know, for the other guys, you can see it on, I'm like, this sucks. You know, like I want, I want to still get a good skate, you know, and when it gets one sided that way, it, it's, 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 like I said, it's fun for the first five minutes. I'm like, Oh man, I forgot what this is like again. You know, it's really how it feels. Yeah. And you know, the, the, the hard part about that is it, 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 I see it all the time with people that are getting beat then they start kind of taking liberties uh, only, only because they're frustrated. Like they're not assholes in general. It's just, it's just frustrating getting the, getting the will yeah. off of you. And what, what I would do if I was, if you guys should try this, you should switch what hand you play with. So if you're a right-handed man, you should get some left-handed sticks and, and see, and just see how, I mean, I think it would even things up and, and also it'll show those other teams, like, you know, tell them what you're doing. Don't, don't be dicks about it and say, Oh, we're just trying to show you up. Be like, Hey, here we get what's going on. Let us try something and see if this this it gives you guys a challenge. And it, you know, you st- you can still skate with a wrong-handed stick, so you, you know, it still gives them a skate. So uh, try it and see see what happens. It's much harder to get leagues going where got where you bring your own team into for it to be as far as far as fairness goes. When when it's our, yeah. if you bring your own team, you know, we, once we have this many teams, we'll start the league. Well, you know, at that point, you got a lot of ringers, right? And then you got a lot of new guys and, and the people yeah. that don't have teams that just come in, get put all together, which are n- normally new guys, right? Um, so it yeah, it's hard to it's, in his case, you know, to get things going. The, the league just we you just have to grow the game in that area. Yeah, we got to grow the game. Yeah. It's getting yeah. there, but it, it's funny you brought the left hand because I was really shooting pucks last night in the garage and i started stick handling i just flipped over my second started stick handling i was like i feel like i should i'm gonna get a lefty and mm-hmm. start stick handling and like i was thinking about it last night i was gonna talk to you about it today and i was like bro like I'm, i was like i want to start stick handling i bet you i could because I, I could shoot like i was shooting off the backhand yeah. you know i was like i can i was like i'm gonna make this happen like it's gonna be a new challenge for me like no joke you should do it i yeah. i did it i have a wooden one that i have and it's because i grew up i started in roller hockey the, com- the comment you made earlier about those guys and then went to ice and I learned the wrong way. I'm dominant right hand, but my left hand's on top. So I should be the opposite way. That's all I did. And I'm like, man, this, if I had like, if I had the 20 years of this, this would be way right. (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm definitely gonna, I'm definitely gonna try it. I'm gonna try to bring it to fruition. You play it every uh, draft experience. You want a team? I I do. Yeah, I do. For the most part play. I mean, obviously getting old, I've had some injuries where I've had to sit out, uh, but for the most part, I mean, I think that's, that's kind of what makes these things, uh, a little bit unique and a little special is that uh, the guys that actually own the BLPA are out there. Uh, but you know, the reality is, is, is we're getting so big, you know, I have a wife and a kid. And so I, I can't be at all of them now. Uh, and Randy, obviously like he, he can't be at all of them. So we're kind of starting to kind of spread out and, and, you know, get a staff that can, that can run these things. Cause we, we do want to do them everywhere. I want, I want to have a tournament every weekend. I want to have two tournaments every weekend. 
um, not just not just hockey, but you know. So when we talk about where we want to grow this thing, is is right. we want to be doing events every weekend. We we want to have beer leaguers out. Uh, I say fellowshipping and not not like church, but just just fellowshipping with each other, you know, and and you know, loving each other basically. Have you guys thought about expanding into the roller world too? Doing roller tournaments? I, I've actually been talking uh, to a couple people uh, about the roller uh, set right now, uh, and, and and we're in, we're in on it. Same with lacrosse. Uh, we have we're working oh, on shit. the lacrosse draft as well. Um, and so, I mean, I think we're going to get to those sports. I, I'm hoping. I'm trying to do it. It's way easier because I want to be at the first event uh, just yeah. to make sure that, that that's good. I've just never. I've never done inline. I've never. Yeah. I don't. I might own a, a set of inline skates that I bought. When I first started, I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna skate around the garage, and it just it just never worked, never happened. Like they're like they're literally like mission high lows. Like yeah. they're switching old. back and yeah. forth too. switching back and mm-hmm. forth. Even you know, no matter your age or your skill, it's just it's it's, it's a task on its, it's own. Go, if you play yeah. ice, then That's... you go play roller, and you got ice again. Like it's, it's yeah, it's, I play it's different. I want to play. I want to play roller just because every single person I know that has played roller, every single person, they have just fucking filthy mitts. Yeah, and it's like well. Do I just have to play roller to get filthy mitts? I guess that's what I have to do. Yeah, it helps. It, it's different though, but like, cause like, man, like when I when I stick handle, I play both. So I, I I play roller midweek, ice, you know, on the weekends, and then I skate. I don't know, like three four days a week. I have like the Mars blades. You know, I do the outdoor skating, so I skate a lot on my street and stuff like that. But um, yeah, man, making the transition, the first couple strides are weird. Like when you get back on ice, going to roller, nothing changes. But going to ice, man, you almost toe pick. It's definitely a little bit weird. But um, dude, playing, uh, going back and forth, it's 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 weird, but it's worth it in my opinion, though. But the roller, completely different like game you said, too. That's why the, the oh, hands yeah. come into play because it's more individual. Where it's one on one, yeah, yeah, they're a lot more individual. You gotta have the hands. Yeah, but roller yeah, meant something uh, that, that pump drags. Nasher. Mm-hmm. Going yeah, out, yeah, you ever watch Na- You ever watch Nasher? Yeah, yeah. yeah. On YouTube. He's yeah, a Nasher, Columbus, like, Ohio guy. Has he been to your tournament? Yeah. He's never been to my tournaments, but I, I've met him on a few okay. occasions. Like I met him in the airport one time, and we kind of bullshitted back and forth. Great dude, right? Great, great dude. Obviously, great at uh, Chell, and uh, he, he plays a lot of roller too. That's when I think roller. I, I think Nasher, right? And I think Spitting uh, Spitting Chicklets has kind of jumped into that roller roller game as well because yep. roller is just kind of a, a way easier to put on than ice in terms of just requirements of facility yeah. and, and and all that stuff. So yeah, your price point uh, but is I much mean, lower. I, but yeah, price price point too is much lower. But I mean, we definitely. I mean, if if the BLPA wants it to happen, we're, we're going to make it happen eventually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's basically, I mean, that's what I always say. Like, people are like, oh, can you do it here? And if you'll support it, I'll do it there. That, that's basically what it is because at the end of the day, like, the people are the BLPA and the BLPA is the people. So, you know, if the people want it, you give the people what they want. For sure, man. I'm excited. I'm excited for you and your future with the company. Because like I said on the website, I saw softball and talking about roller lacrosse. I mean, soccer, it's endless. I mean, you can really nail all the sports here for sure. And, and having an organization like yours, just having that, it's almost like that name, you know, that name brings the respect with it, like the vibe, the respect, everything. So I, why, why wouldn't you be successful in, in every route? It's wild. Yeah. Backtracking a little bit um, back to the draft ex- uh, experience. Um, I want to touch on the fact that you boys are global. You've had some draft experiences <laughs> in other countries, uh, time yep. zones. Uh, can we touch on where you've been and where you guys are thinking about going? Uh, yeah, with the BLPA, we, we've done one international one. We, we just got back from Iceland, uh, I guess it'd be two and a half, three weeks ago, and it was absolutely insane. We're, we're actually, they liked us so much over there, and we liked it so much over there. We're going to go back in May of 2023. Ooh, but good in, to know. in terms of yeah in terms of other places uh like this is back this is why i like the international ones because i can go back to dreaming a little bit uh, it doesn't have to be domestic places where we've been so uh i've i've played a, a draft in japan and so we're going to put a blpa one back over in japan uh, we did it in tokyo um uh in 2019 i guess that that was when when i was there doing doing the draft and so we're going to try to go over on the the east the eastern side of the uh or maybe eastern or the western yeah we're gonna go over the other side whatever i'm just gonna do it <laughs> uh, um so we want to go there I, like i'm a i'm a big uh history geek so i love ancient rome like i was i was like the president of the latin club in high school or whatever and so i want to go to rome and, and put on a, a draft i think that'd be a cool one you know do all the emperors of rome as the jersey theme that'd be sick uh, then, Australia is on the list. New Zealand, we, we've got some inroads in New Zealand going right now that they, they want us to come over. And so it's, it's really, I mean, it's, like I said, wherever, 
wherever we can go. Like I love going and seeing new cultures. I love seeing beer league hockey or just hockey in general in these places that aren't thought of as traditional places. And so if we can get, if we can get 56 or 84 people to, to go, we'll, we'll, we'll do one wherever. Is it, do you get a lot of um, signups from the locals or is it a lot more uh, American Canadian guys coming over? The first one is, is way more North American uh, than, than local. Uh, just because the locals don't don't know us, right? And and so mm-hmm. like we go to Iceland, and then we now we have locals that are like, holy, like we need to do this. And it's actually that's actually what you you want, right? Because you want yeah. the locals to see what's going on. You want them to play in their local tournament, but you want them to come experience our cities and our culture. And yeah. that's that's what you find happen. Like we're already working on a team from Iceland to come over when we do this beer league world championship and just say, hey, you have an automatic berth if you come outside of north america and so they're 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 loading up to that's come over and play some american teams, so. that's real sick that's i missed that's I, sick. I totally blanked on the first part so you, you were taking people there just to like yep. get it going and then were, were you getting and then like then so said you're getting locals to sign up and go from there now they're coming here bro man that's so sick yep. i can see this being bro. huge in like fucking russia too for sure obviously the way they play the game over there. man you guys yeah the global too is just unreal so this yeah, is I mean, so this is your this is your 100 percent your full time on this yeah, we yeah we we have this. It is my full time job. We have this, and we have the merchandise side of things yeah. uh, that we run, uh, which is is kind of my focus right now. We we have these new VIP subscription boxes, which basically came as like we have so many people buying some some shirts. Like, why don't we make a shirt of the month club? And it's like, okay, why don't we also throw nice. some hockey goodies and and we can get some companies. So we we kind of had uh, our first month was January, and then we had like a forty seven percent growth, uh, you know, to the next month. And so we're just gonna ca- keep doing it and sending nice. out these boxes and. Uh, you know, and then merch just try, trying to come really like a, a, a lifestyle brand, really like, you know, like, a, I guess I don't want to compare myself to anyone, of course, but you know, gong show, they, they've got that hit on the head. They have their kind of their demographic that buys all their stuff. And then you have right. like, obviously bar bar still has their stuff. And then we have, you know, a community like that, that, that loves what we're putting out. So we're, we're working on, you know, uh, being able to find some distributors. Like we've had companies like pure hockey reach out to us and want to carry our stuff. And so, uh, right now, the the focus is not only adding events, but also becoming way more. Uh, I guess leaving our footprint a little bit more on on the merchandise side of things. That's so, wow, man. That's yeah. as I say, your store is looking legit too. You got you got like the the locker room set, the premium set. It's it's yeah. pretty cool, man. And then you got look BL, BLPA versus the world right here. Yeah, that's yeah. A, that's a sick. That's a sick yeah. print. We love it. We love it. And that's that's a task all in its own. I mean, we know on our end, we, we got silky mitts going. That's that, but there's so much fun with that, right? Going to create are you part of the designs, I'm assu- assuming, with this? Yeah, yeah. I have a guy that uh, he actually owns his own his own design. It's called uh, Dixie Hockey. He's out of uh, Southern Texas and mm-hmm. we kind of connected because uh, I'm an, uh, I'm from the southern United States. They moved to Canada, he's Canadian, they moved to the southern United States and we oh, wow. have this, this little <laughs> synergy and uh he has this stuff, which is cool. I just love his vibe and like the, the old tiny retro stuff that he creates. And he just said, let, I'll create some stuff for BLPA. So I guess let me plug him and say, everyone go check out Dixie hockey. He's got some pretty cool designs, but That's also what's up. check out beer league players, beer league players.com is where all our merch is. So you go check that out too. Sick. Definitely. Yes. man. That's cool. Hell yeah. Well, before we get out of here, man, what I wanted to touch on the NHL with you. We, yeah, we got talked to. a little bit before you're, you're a big Calgary guy. Uh, now that you're there, did you have a team here in the States before you fell in love with Calgary or. You know, I didn't, I just, I just want fair warning. I probably got about five more minutes because then my little guy goes to bed and when I'm home, you're good, I don't like yeah. bedtime. So, I'm with um, you. so yeah, I, I was, I did not watch hockey. I mean, I knew what hockey, obviously I knew Wayne Gretzky who didn't. Uh, but wasn't interested in the least in hockey. Right. I watched the Mighty Ducks <laughs> growing up. Uh, that's, if you, know, you were a ball player, right? Uh, yeah. We didn't, we didn't get to get yeah, in there. Darn it. Yeah. Well, we, I'll come back on again if you'll have me. Yeah, um, absolutely. He, uh, you guys can come on my show, right? So, yeah. I'd love um, to. Tag team. So uh, I, I happened to come up here and watch a battle of Alberta on New Year's <sighs> Eve uh, for the first oh, ever NHL game. What? And uh, the next day I met uh, I met the man, the myth, the legend, Jerome McGinley. And he... <sighs> um, he, he took his time out of, out of his data to chat with me, make fun of my accent. I don't have it anymore, but I used to sound hopefully not as bad as my parents, but I used to sound like a hick, I guess. But um, <laughs> he, uh, he, uh, he took his time to talk to me. And at that time in Oklahoma, we had uh, the New Orleans team that was displaced from Hurricane Katrina. And those guys would cross the street to, to, to not have to talk to fans. And here this guy is uh, just, just, what are just bullshitting with me? Like one of the dudes. Right. And, next year I came back and he remembered me. He's like, Oh, you're the dude from Oklahoma. And 
And, uh, you know, Iggy, so when I say who got me into the game, I say my wife, if next to it would be Iggy, right? Iggy, I was gonna like, say. He, he made me, he made me realize that, Hey, hockey, hockey is just, they're just regular dudes, right? They're not, they're not prima donnas. They're just hardworking guys that go to work, play a game that they love and, and, and do that. And so, uh, that kind of got me hooked on the Calgary flames and I've been a diehard fan ever since I, I would, I would like to say that like Calgary is my number one team in all of sports, but I'm my, my Oklahoma Sooner is probably number one, but close second. Close second. Uh, Let's say if you're if you're a Sooner, that's a, that, there's a lot there's a legacy with those Sooners. So that's what, a, what, a, what a fucking welcome to the hockey world. Your your white team <laughs> buys you the equipment. You go to fucking <laughs> Battle of Alberta. That's a we want to do that. And then you get Iggy yeah. to sit here chat you up. Wow. And remembered you. This wow. guy's taking some knocks, and he remembered you. You guys are friends now. <laughs> yeah. He remembered you. Yeah, you guys are friends. <laughs> hey, well, here's what's crazy. Here's what's crazy. I so then I go back home and a few a few years later. Uh, one of the Flames owners came to the University of Oklahoma to be like their backup goalie. His name is Louis Libin. And he, we got to talk, and he's like, I got Iggy's phone number right here. I could call him right now. And I'm like, fucking call him. Let's go. And then there he called him. We chatted on that. He didn't, I didn't say, hey, you know, <laughs> this, but, uh, it, it, but it's, it's, it's just crazy how connected like the hockey world is. And yeah. we talked about it on the front end, like how, how, how small of a world it is in, in, in not only beer league hockey, but hockey in general. It really is like a, a special little club. And, you know, I, I'm biased, but I think the Flames have a, a, their best shot since I've been a fan to win the, the Stanley Cup. After that was my question. The, I was about to ask you that. Yeah, they picked up Tyler Toffoli, and, I mean, they're, they're just playing out of this world right now. I mean, Johnny and Johnny. Yeah, and they're playing good just, hockey uh, for sure. Great goaltending. Yeah, well, that, that's what we were missing. I mean, we, we haven't had a good goalie since Kipper. And uh, Kipper, one of the greatest dudes of all time, that just walked away from the game when he was still a bad motherfucker and just wanted to go smoke cigarettes and, <laughs> and, uh, fish. and that's what he still does right so um yeah and i think they have a, a good chance i mean coming out of out of uh the west it, it's gonna i think it's gonna be the abs and it's gonna be yeah. the flames vegas is in there uh but i don't count okay people are gonna jump on. i don't count vegas they haven't had to they haven't had to go through the toils of a real fan yet where they where they miss the playoffs or they're in the basement and they have to yeah, deal with that they need and to I, feel the pain and, yeah, and you know what, and, and I, I, I'm offended a little bit by that. I mean, I, I shouldn't be, <laughs> but it's just like, you know what, you're a hockey fan. You're not a hockey fan until you feel what I've felt. For That's, how, and, and, you know, at the end of the day, at least we're not Oiler fans, but those guys are really, I mean, they're, they're just getting kicked. Everywhere. They got the best player in the world and still can't. Still, still can't, can't get it done. Um, arguably you know, the two so. best. <laughs> but, uh, arguably, yeah. Arguably. I, yeah, I, and, you know, I, I, I shit on the Oilers because, uh, you know, when, when I became a Flames fan, the AHL team came to Oklahoma City, so I had to deal with those fans because I'm now a Flames fan. So now I'm dealing with them. And then just it's you know, oh, we were so good in the '80s. I'm like, well, listen, fucks, I didn't even watch hockey in the '80s, so I don't give a shit. <laughs> and <laughs> and, uh, and so you know, we go back and forth. But at the end of the day, it's like you you want them to be good if your Flames are good because you right. want them, you, you want them to be exciting games, win or lose. Uh, and Connor McDavid. I mean, what can you say? I you know, I chirp Connor McDavid and Gretzky because the Oilers, but. No one can deny, you know, the impact that yeah. they, they've had on the game. And, you know, I, I would love to see the Flames and the Oilers in the playoffs. That would be – I would hate it if we lost, but it would sure be fun as hell to watch. While battle of – It's uh, almost like a hangover. Yeah, uh, best of seven battle of Alberta. Mm -hmm. We can get to seven games, but, uh, yeah, yeah, so I, I – yeah, I love the Flames. I see you're a Caps fan, so, you know, I like the Cavs. I was glad when Ovi got his uh, his cup. I was glad when that chick over uh, over Vegas just got to throw that out there over Vegas yeah, over Vegas yeah. fuck oh, Vegas yeah, <laughs> yeah you showed them uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so yeah so I you know I, I don't get to watch as much hockey as I used to because I'm usually busy same with NFL like everyone's always like, oh did you watch Super Bowl no I didn't I, I didn't nah, care about it nah. this is the first year I didn't really have fantasy football to keep it interesting because I was just so busy I didn't get to watch any games so now the same's kind of going into NHL, but uh, yeah. I, I still, I'm going to root for the flames. And I, I hope they, they make me happy. Just one, one time in my life. Like I turned 40 and next, next Tuesday, as a matter of fact, I hey, turned 40 and that's what I want. Thank you very much. That's what I want for my birthday. I just want the flames to, you know, get to the Stanley Cup final. I'd love for them to win, but just to be there would be enough for yeah. me. Yeah. Hell enough, yeah. right? Hell yeah. Well, Nick, I don't, I don't want to hold you, man. Bedtime's coming. Thank yeah. you so much yeah, for joining is. us, man. Like you said, we'll definitely do this again, and hopefully we can link up in May and, and definitely in September looking forward to the draft night. But if we don't get a team in, in May, I'd love to reach out to you and at least yeah. see if we can come and hang out or whatever and, uh, you know, just if you're going to be there. But We got to do the, thank the draft you. experience for sure with you boys. Yeah, yeah you, definitely. You got to get in there. And you got you to do I always tell people. Your local one is fun. I get it. Mm -hmm. but travel to one because you get a yeah. way different experience when you don't have to deal with like 
going home to the wife and kids after the hockey. So, uh, I dig but, it, but, man. You're a smart, uh, you're a smart man. I fucking love this guy. I love uh, him. I love him. We'll have to have you back for sure. <laughs> Yeah. All right, boys. Anytime Definitely. you guys let me know and, and I'll do it. But thanks for having me. Everyone yeah. go check out the BLPA. And uh, again, thank you guys. All right. Thanks, Nick. Have a good one. Brother. All right. Take care, Nick. Hey, you too. All right. Man. Always. Uh, we don't have enough fucking time, apparently, with some of our guests because that was fucking fun. I'm glad everyone's yeah. still here. That was a good one, man. Nick's an absolute beaut. I can't wait until we get to, to meet him in person and, and take part in his tournaments. Definitely going to do a right? draft. We should definitely another, plan on another We guest. should go to another. We should go to another one in the city, like he said. We should definitely do that. But I want to do the draft experience and fucking wherever they're going next out of the country. Like, yeah, I'll go to Rome. I'll play hockey yeah. in fucking Rome. Sign yeah. me up. Yeah, that, that would Tokyo, be sweet. Uh, Iceland, like, that's he's an so absolute funny. beaut. Hell yeah. He's, he's an absolute Love beaut. Love everything that, they're no, doing. See, yeah, nothing but success for him. So definitely, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Be sure to check out his webpage for local tournaments and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, man, that was, that was a good one. And that's... Phew, that was, was a good uh, one for not, have, for not having an interview in a while. That was a damn good one. Hell yeah. Beer League. We're, we're the Beer League interviewers of the century with that one. That was yeah. beautiful. All oh, right, man. Well, I'm good. Hey, good seeing you. Uh, it's Tuesday. USA hockey plays tonight, 11, 10 p.m. Can't wait. We're getting closer to the gold medal in the Winter Olympics. Men's curling has been on fire. Uh, shed a tear for Sean White when he took his last Man, they're retired. Uh, How was, real is that, uh, bro? Not a good Our one, generation's man. done. 30s tony hawk's gone i just oh, watched a pod with tony hawk today my man's still skateboarding he's 50 he's or, oh 50 since we're speaking to old heads in our generation shout out to yager turned 50 today still playing 50 still playing pro still playing pro some say could come the to play for uh, in the nhl for a playoff in the nhl play hey, baby. get out of here this guy's a crazy. fourth liner come in play power play minutes like, only if he's got a mullet i don't want him to come here always unless he's got a mullet. you got to remember these guys are like the rock stars they got to keep their hair so people <sighs> recognize them in public when they get older you know it um, you all know right it. man hey uh great to see you buddy i can't wait till next great week to see you be well guys <laughs> The boys from Men Behind the Mitts just want to say thanks for listening. And as always, be sure to follow us on all your favorite social media outlets at Men Behind the Mitts. Brought to you by Silky Mitts Hockey Club. Support the boys at SilkyMittsHC.com.